Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. Are you looking to plan and book an upcoming Disney vacation? Contact the Tierra Talk Show's official travel agent, James from Destinations in Florida, by visiting destinationsinflorida.com backslash tiara for a free quote. The link is also included in the show notes on our website. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. This week at the Tierra Talk Show, we are welcoming back our Cast Member Corner segment in which we speak to cast members of the Disney theme parks from around the world. I would like to welcome the cast of Disney's MGM Studios, Doug Live. Hi, uh, my name is John Gracie. I played Skeeter Valentine and uh, also the MC of the show in Doug Live. Hello, my name is Karen Amano. I was the original pork chop. <laughs> Hey, I'm Layden Sudecki, and I was uh, Doug Funny. Oh, man. <laughs> I should have honked. <laughs> <laughs> we have all three best friends on the call. <laughs> I love that. We have all three best friends on the call, and I love this. Uh, I love Doug Live when I saw it. We just had the 16-year anniversary. <laughs> I know. Wow, yeah. 16. <laughs> March 15th, 1999 was when it started around roughly, and then ended on May 12th, 2001, because I think the TV series ended around that time, too. So, uh, John, why don't you get us started off with uh, what you first started out uh, with Disney and how you got to Doug Live? Well, my first show at Disney was Doug Live. Um, after Doug Live, though, I was in the Hunchback show for a while as Victor the Gargoyle, um, as well as um, one of the three kings for holidays around the world at Epcot for a couple of years, and just various other little convention roles and things around the park. Yes, I, I'm originally from Japan, and uh, I moved to New York City and uh, studied acting at a college and uh, acting studios. And then uh, Disney had a national audition tour uh, so I went there and then, uh, I, yeah, I got the, uh, the part for a pork chop as well as a, a holiday storyteller. And after, um, Doug's show, I, um, moved to, uh, world showcase players at Epcot and I still do a holiday storyteller every year. And, uh, uh I'm Layden. Uh, I started at, uh, Disney when Pleasure Island first opened. Um, I got, uh, I got cast to do the original, uh, um, the original Comedy Warehouse show, and that was in uh, 1989. We opened Pleasure Island, and uh, I was there, and I also uh, did uh, Streetmosphere characters uh, over at Disney MGM Studios, and um, I, I also uh, worked at Hoop to Do Review, and uh, I subbed into uh, King Louie uh, in the Jungle Book show, and um, I also went out to L.A. and I did uh, the genie in the Aladdin show out in uh, Disney's California Adventure. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, so I got into uh, doing uh, Doug. Uh, we had a workshop and uh, they, uh, they workshopped the concept for Michael Eisner and a bunch of uh, um, high-end people. And uh, we had to do uh, a version of the show uh, in this tiny little room. And Michael Eisner was sitting at a table like right across from us when, when we were singing all the songs from, from the Doug show. And uh, it was all very intimidating. But we <laughs> got we did it, and and, uh, and and they gave us the green light. So uh, it was all very uh, exciting. First, let me just explain to the listeners who did not see Doug Live, which you should uh, before you l- listen to the rest <laughs> of our interview because it would make a little bit more sense. Actually, John has some videos of him playing Skeeter. And I don't know, John, is that Layden also playing Doug in your videos, or is that somebody else? No, it's not Layden. Um, and I'm not – don't – I think – I think it's Karen in the video, but I'm not 100% yeah. sure about that. I haven't watched it in a long time. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's not Lane, but it might be Karen. And oh, he, you mean that YouTube with the trivia? Yeah, with my little trivia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, really it's fun. <laughs> okay, okay. That's you, yeah. And I think Serena was playing the uh, the hero kid because the hero kid stepped out. Uh, 
I, I think right. yes, yeah, Seren- right. Serena people would know as um, she's actually one of the co-hosts of uh, Some of All Thrills, the attraction interventions at Epcot. It has three videos up which have trivia about Doug Live while you're watching. It's a lot of fun to watch and look at. Um, but anyway, so the songs are, are really good. And so we're talking about Doug, who is an animated character from Nickelodeon. And then uh, Disney bought the character and started doing their own episodes. And during the show, Doug, who is like a little, uh, would you say he's a teenager, I guess? <laughs> I think he's 12. Is he's he like 12, yeah. 12? He's 12. <laughs> and he turned 13 on the TV show, I think, at one point. Right. Okay, <laughs> so like a preteen, and he is talking about how he moved, and he is at 21 Jumbo Street is the beginning song, which I love that song, and it's a lot of fun. And then he meets some friends, Skeeter, Patty Mayonnaise, and Pork Chop is his dog. First of all, I wanted to talk about the really big book of dating. Yeah. Now, that, that, is, that is a big deal on this show because Doug doesn't know how to talk to Patty Mayonnaise, and we were all in our adolescence, and we know how it was like to talk to the person that we had a crush on, big book of dating, actually, that you're holding was it something what was it was it like a textbook or something that you guys were reading it, from yeah it was a history book actually so um many times i you you know you just open the book up and you'd open to like say the holocaust and, <laughs> and be doing the <laughs> oh, show right. looking at that a lot of times uh so you never <laughs> quite knew where you're gonna open up to, to history but it was very educational right and and i remember it was the really big book of dating for boys for boys but, <laughs> there must have been another a uh, 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 book that was for girls, but we had the one for <laughs> right. Got to be clear about that. Companion piece. <laughs> but we did. I remember we did do a show for, um, and Doctor Drew happened to be like in the audience, right in the front. And at that time, he was doing like the Love Line show. Oh, and it occurred to me as we were doing the show, oh, this is kind of interesting. I wonder what he's thinking about our, our Doug Live dating advice right now. Well, I know for sure that when you use that book, and and John is right, like whatever page we turned to, we had to. You know, we had to de- we had to deal with whatever page it was, and 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 like he said, it was an actual textbook. So who knows what what pages would end up? <laughs> Plus the fact that all the choreography that was involved in that and that number was complicated, and everything w- um, everything was uh, scored out. So there was no opportunities for making a mistake. If you made a mistake, you were done because mm-hmm. everything was all you know it, it was all timed out, and all had to be timed out perfectly, especially. The end of that number when uh, when Doug gets hit in the face with the door <laughs> by, um, mm-hmm. by Roger. And I know that this this show went through many workshops on how to how to get it just right because there were extended scenes and extended songs. So what was it? What was exactly cut out to make the final version that was seen in the parks? A lot of Skeeter was cut out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, first, not a lot, but the first half of the show was where I think it, they thought it was dragging a little bit because. Doug answers in the show. Doug answered a trivia question on the radio, and originally there were like three questions I think that we answered. So it went on a little bit longer, just little lines here and there, um, mostly from the beginning, from the first half of the show, if I remember correctly. Right, and and I think back in the the first workshop, um, I know that Patty Mayonnaise had her own song, and she sang. Um, I think it was an ice skating song, or something about ice skating, or something like that. But she had. Her own number as well. She had like a, and it was kind of a ballady song. And, and Michael Eisner thought that it would be better to just have Doug do the one song. But um, that's one of the ones that I know for sure. I, I remember what? from seeing the video that, that Skeeter did more singing in the workshop too, which I was not involved in, but um, I do remember that as well. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah they had more singing. I had to e- like... express my feeling through barking, <laughs> like, Ooh, or something like that. You were so good at it though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else could play a dog like you, okay? <laughs> oh, thank you. Because <laughs> I love poor Chuck. He's so cute. And you're, and all the makeup is very extensive for basically everyone except Doug, because all Doug really has to wear is this um, kind of a, what would you say, called like a wig, maybe? <laughs> yes. Everybody has to wear the colored makeup. So Skeeter is entirely blue. Roger is entirely green. Patty Mayonnaise is orange. And Pork Chop is gray. Right. <laughs> but I uh, originally, I was supposed to wear mask uh, covering, um, you know, uh, down to my uh, nose. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Right? Yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah from the very beginning. It's so hard to breathe. And, and uh, it looked really think, creepy, if I remember correctly. Right, <laughs> it did. It and looked more creators, like a cartoon, but you, it, it, yeah. it had no ability to move it, right? Right. You couldn't yeah. move it much. Yeah, and the creators thought, no, that's not our image of pork chops. So. Oh, I will tell you about uh, if you you were talking about the the makeup and and the hair and everything. Uh, a little bit of trivia: 
that that hair piece that went on Doug's head, it was like nine little um, pieces of hair that came up on the top of his head. And that whole piece was uh, uh, was like a toupee, and, and we called it Spike. Mm-hmm. And we, ha- we had to go in, you know, early to get the spike on. And that was like the hardest thing that Doug had to do. But the- everybody else had to put on that, that colored makeup that took forever to get off again. And they had if you to- could get it off, really. I mean, yes. you'd have digging in your ears later on. Oh, there's still blue under my nose and my ear, whatever. Oh, yeah. My nose was black. <laughs> like right. even my days off, it's still <laughs> black mm-hmm. on my pores. All my towels were stained blue. <laughs> And uh, I got to leave early because as soon as I, I, I just had re- regular, you know, flesh tone makeup. And so I was like in and out really fast. And I would always say goodbye, everyone. And I got to leave <laughs> early. And then uh, and then karma was a boomerang because then when I went out to L.A. and I had to play the genie in the Aladdin show, then I was the last person to leave because now I had to get out of all of my prosthetics and all of my blue makeup. Oh. And I had all of the same stuff that happened to everybody else in the Doug cast. Now it happened mm-hmm. to me. I would, have, <laughs> I would have blue. I would have blue in my ears for days at a time, <laughs> you know, right? I was. Mm-hmm. You yeah. blow your nose and you'd find more blue makeup, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. They used to sell Red Hot candies because it was featured in the show. Did you guys ever get a chance to try them? Oh, yeah. I love Red I, Hot. Because I don't, I I don't love- remember what they tasted like because I remember I did, I did get a box, but I'm like, I, I don't even remember what they – were they spicy or – Yeah, yeah. They're cinnamon, very hot cinnamon spicy. Yeah, I, I don't like hot cinnamon spicy, so no, I never tried that in the Red <laughs> yeah, Hot. Yeah, I've never <laughs> tried it either. <laughs> And also they had the uh, they had the Doug Live pins and then they had the lunch boxes at the ABC commissary. Do you guys have your lunch boxes still? Yes, I do. I, I do have I... one actually. Yes, somewhere. And then the like a mug cup. Yes, yes. the like mug. I still have mine too. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I didn't get a mug. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm really sad because I love seeing Doug Live there, and then they removed it, and then really nothing was happening until American Idol Experience came and took over the Superstar Television Theater. How long did each of you stay on the show? Uh, well, I was there for the entire time, so I was there from. I did the first show and the last show. So I was about two, almost two and a half years, I think. Wow. Yes, we, we started rehearsing like January 17th or something, right? In open, premiere open yeah. Mar- March 15th. And that, that, that was 99, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yep. then probably a year and a half, yeah, a holiday season, I was asked if I'm interested in to move to World Showcase Players, which was like five months before the Doug show was closed. Okay, and and I was still. I never was. Uh, well, I I was a sub for Doug, so I'd come over from the comedy warehouse and 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 do the show um, whenever they needed me, um, and and I would sub in, and I uh, I stayed. which was a lot at the beginning, though, right? Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot, and the, but I stayed with it the whole time. I know I was in the audience for the last show. I know I was there for the last show too. Do you guys have a favorite song or line from the show? <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> I think I, um, favorite line. Oh, I think I, when I tell Doug he has a nice voice because he just sang a big song, and it's like you know, musicals. No one ever acknowledges that anyone's singing, but we did, and I got to say, "Oh, nice, nice voice," you know, and walk out. <laughs> so that was funny. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Patty, Patty always had the best lines. She did. She did she, have the best lines. She had the best lines. Like after the beat concert. Um, you know, because what happens is the the beats come around on that revolving stage, and then it doesn't stop; they just go right back out again. <laughs> Patty had a great line where she said, uh, uh, "Short it was a little short though. It was a great concert. A little short though. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, right. It was a cool concert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the song um, "Someone Like Me." I thought that was such a beautiful song because it was featured in Doug's movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they put it in the musical version, and Patty also sings with Doug. It's kind of like a duet towards the end of it. And I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a great song. I, I remember uh, like just when I was rehearsing the song and, and putting it together, I just remember how, uh, how, how poignant that song was, you know, it kind of made, it would choke me up a lot because I thought, Oh, how sad that Doug can't even think that she would like him, just someone like him. You know, he can't even wrap his mind around the fact that she could actually like him. You know, it was that she liked someone like him. You know, and I always thought that was the sweetest thing about Doug. 
Now, do you guys have any funny stories about, you know, working on stage or off stage? Because I know, John, I know you say that Skeeter, unfortunately, isn't in a lot of it. You get to hang out backstage for a good some time. Yeah, I played a lot of electronic Yahtzee um, during the big, you know, <laughs> Dr. Rubber Suit scene. I wouldn't say Skeeter's not in it, is out of it a lot, but there's a little chunk of time where, you know, Skeeter's kind of cooling his heels in the back. I uh, oh I got some I got some stories. <laughs> oh boy, I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, one of the things that I remember, Karen and um, uh, like we did how many shows? It sometimes eight shows a day, right? In the summer, yeah, would be yeah. eight really? shows in the summer. It was a lot, but um, I remember after every show and before the next show, Karen Porkchop would always go out and check her props. And I always tease, well, I teased Karen about it one day and I said, why, why every single show, Karen, you check your props every single show. And I said, why, why do you do that every time? And Karen said, in Japan, <laughs> if they don't, if you don't check your props, stage manager will take them. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so is that right, Karen? Oh my like, they would Did I see that? <laughs> If you didn't go check them, they would steal your props. <laughs> oh, well, do you or remember some that? other actors? I, I did. I say that. Yes, you did. <gasps> oh, <laughs> you maybe. told me if you don't, if you didn't check your props every time that you were worried that someone would come and take your props. Oh, they, they would, they would move them or they would hide them. Oh, oh yeah. Sometimes it would happen. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> Old school in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of funny things have happened backstage as well, because with the makeup, we couldn't leave because we had no backstage access. So once we were there, we were there. So we just kind of had to entertain ourselves in between shows, which could be um, probably some stories I shouldn't tell. But there were some funny times backstage as well. <laughs> I, would t I got another story that I think uh, this, is a, this is a great little secret about Doug. This is probably like a little bit of trivia that I don't think. Well, well let's find out who knew <laughs> about this or not. But as the show progressed, initially, uh, Doug wears this little, um, he's got like this little belly pad that he wears because he's 12 years old, but he's got like a little belly. So we had to wear this, uh, well, the Doug, Doug had to wear this belly pad. And I kind of gained a little weight as, <laughs> as the show progressed. <laughs> and there, we had gotten to a point where I didn't need to wear my, my pad anymore. <laughs> So, <laughs> I think I, I did had, know that. <laughs> there was no hiding it. But um, but I ended up, I, I thought I was being so clever, but I would just pretend like I was going to wear the belly pad. I didn't have to wear it. It wasn't needed. But uh, <laughs> then I lost weight again, and I had to, I had to wear the belly pad again. But uh, I just remember during that time feeling so humiliated. I was like, oh, well, I, have, I can't wear the belly pad. There's no room. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Did you guys get to meet any uh, famous people backstage after they saw the show? Yeah, I know because yeah. they would tell us usually if someone was coming because they would get the – and I know Gary Sinise came in and we requested a meet and greet, <laughs> which he <laughs> granted. <laughs> um, I remember meeting Gary Sinise and Laurie Metcalf, who I think was on Roseanne at the time. Oh, wow. That's cool. Um, and um, George mm -hmm. Lucas came through. Ricky Lake came through. I think Christina Aguilera came through. Oh, wow. A few. Yeah. A lot of times you would just see him out. Usually you look for the guest services folks in the in the plaid vest and say, oh, who's the famous person? The guy who created Doug, his name was Jim Jenkins, and he mm -hmm. was there a lot in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And yes. he was the nicest guy. And if you ever yeah. wanted to know what, what Doug looked like when he grew up, Jim Jenkins <laughs> was Doug. Very nice. I went up to New York not long after the show closed, and he took me on a tour of Jumbo Studios, and it was, it was very nice. Wow, that's so cool. Can you guys tell me a little bit about what you've done since Doug Live? Um, sure. I um, Well, I currently work for the University of Central Florida um, College of Medicine, <laughs> which is awesome. I was, I've been at wow. UCF for about 10 years. I'm at the College of Medicine now about two and a half years. And I still do theater um, you know, when I can, when I get a chance to. Uh, usually to a show or two a year, so I still get in there and do that. Um, but yeah, I have a, a big people job now, so... <laughs> Good job, Skeeter. <laughs> Thanks. I, I succeeded, I guess. I, I moved to World Showcase Players. And then, uh, yeah, I was performing in um, uh, UK Pavilion, France, Norway, Italy. And then I was asked if I would like to open my, like, one-woman uh, uh, Japanese storyteller show at the Japan Pavilion. So, um I uh, co-wrote uh, the script, some scripts, and um, I did it 
I don't know, for four years, for five years. Yes. And then my show was closed. And uh, so I was still, you know, freelancing and uh, holiday season. I still go uh, do the show. And yeah, um, event translating, uh, website evaluators. Yeah. A little bit of everything. And um, Japanese storyteller at the festivals and the schools. That's what I do. And uh, I was mentioning a little bit that uh, I I went out to L.A. and, and played the genie in the Aladdin show, and uh, and uh, I left uh, I left the Aladdin show in 2005, and now I'm at uh, Universal Studios uh, in Orlando, and uh, I'm performing at the uh, the disaster show where we we take audience members and we put them in a disaster movie, and uh, we have a lot of fun with it. We film them in a disaster movie, and and it's it's comedy and improv and, and it's a lot of silliness and I also uh, perform uh, with a group downtown in downtown Orlando called the SAC Comedy Lab www.sak.com they're a great uh, improv group it's the same improv group that Wayne Brady came from and uh, we have a lot of fun working down there and um and and I also write and direct uh, on occasion uh, for special events and conventions here in town I have some fun Disney questions I always ask my guests. They're called the Fab Three Disney questions. So we'll start with the Donald one. So the Donald one is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to watch over and over again? Okay. Oh, I will tell you. Um, I remember going to see uh, – I know I saw Bed Knobs and Broomsticks – more than once at, at, at the movie theater, which was a huge deal. Um, you know, uh, uh, folks you know, didn't often go uh, to the movies more than once, you know, and, and, uh, and our family didn't have that much money. But I know for sure that we went to see um, uh, Bed Knobs and Brooms at Six more than once. And I, I, I also know that on, on The Wonderful World of Disney, I know I really liked Swiss Family Robinson. I always thought Swiss Family Robinson was a great movie. I know I saw that, I saw that many times. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was in Japan, and I don't remember I have, if I've watched it, any of them. But, you know, since I, I have a six-year-old daughter, so she, you know, <laughs> led me into the Disney, you know, world. And, you know, Frozen, Big Hero 6, I like it now. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah, my, my favorite Disney movie now is Hunchback, I'll say that. And our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? And we will exclude the Doug Live characters. The genie. I think the genie. I would get along great with the genie. Mulan. I'll say Skeeter. I'm sorry. I have to say Skeeter. Skeeter. Oh, that's okay. (laughs) Skeeter Skeeter. never gets the props he deserves. And our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this moment, what immediately comes to mind? Let it go, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> let it go. Well, you have a six-year-old daughter, so it's not your fault. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> let us all let it go. <laughs> <We'll> all- <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and a one, and a two. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys all for coming on the show. This was a lot of fun to talk about Doug Live. I feel that it doesn't get enough love. And again, in the show <laughs> notes below, everybody, you could check out the link to view John's videos with the trivia, of course, with the show Doug Live that was at Disney's MGM Studios from 1999 to 2001. If you had to use one word to explain your Disney experience, what word would that be? Super fun. And, uh, yeah, of course, magical. I will say creative.